Okay guys, we are going to be looking at software again today, but it's going to be system software. That's the difference because the last time we looked at application software, today we're looking at system software. So just to recap from the last video, the previous video, we looked at application software, like what it is, what it does, why we use it, what we use it for. And we looked at like, uh, we can accomplish tasks. We can categorize the software to different categories. We are there to produce output, to solve problems, and it can be actually accessed or must be accessed via the operating system but today we're going to move on and we're looking at system software now system software consists of a graphical user interface that's very important and that's part of the operating system then we also have various utilities and I'll explain that in a few minutes and the point of having system software is so that you are able to communicate with the hardware of your computer system the operating system also then gives you access in, um, in terms of overall system configuration and security, such as logging in, logging out, etc., passwords and all that stuff. So that's system software in a very small nutshell. And let's move on. So now if we look at the typical features of an operating system, what is an operating system and what are the typical features of an operating system? Well, every device that we work with has to have an operating system of some kind. And here you can see I've got four different types of operating systems and you should recognize at least two of these, okay? Or at least three of these actually. So we have Windows 10, we have Mac OS X, we have Android, which is the latest version, is also 10, by the way, this is 2020, and Linux. Linux is super cool, open source software, right there, open source, completely free, very, very cool stuff though. So let's look at some of the typical things we have with various operating systems, some of the standard features that most operating systems will have. Normally, there's some sort of a login screen, you have to log in. That's the security aspect. You have a username and a password and you will be able to log into your computer. Once you've logged in, you normally have what's called a desktop. So if you're on Windows, it looks something a little bit like this. If you're, this is Linux or actually it's, it's Linux Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the type or the version of the operating system or a flavor as they call it. And here you can see it's the coolest desktop ever. I love it. And you can see uh, Windows in Windows. We have, it's called Windows because there are Windows. Okay, everything opens up in Windows. That was the whole thing. And there you can see we've got uh, two windows open there. That's what it looks like in Ubuntu. You can see it's actually very similar. So this whole graphical user interface uh, sort of flows through a lot of the operating systems. So what that means is you're probably able to work with almost any operating system intuitively. Folders and files. Uh, Again, because the operating system gives you access to the computer system or the directory, you've got access to the root folders, you've got access to all the subfolders in terms of folders and files. There's another example there on Ubuntu. Then an operating system will give you access to the settings of that operating system. So you can access the various settings to do with your network and connectivity, the accounts on the computer, the various search options or startup options, for example, the updates, security, all of that. And there's another example there from Ubuntu. Again, you can see it's very, very similar. The, the sort of going to say flavor the <laughs> consistency in the interface is very similar in, across most of them now let's have a look mobile operating systems again the same sort of thing so these will be like things on uh, your phone or your tablet for example and you've got various options there as well here are just some screenshots I took from my phone it's an Android based operating system and there you can see the various screens on all the different things that I've got access to in this operating system now the utilities the point of having an operating system is to be able to control a computer, work with a computer. But an operating system will have utility software to perform certain tasks that are related to the running of your machine. So let's have a look at some of the utilities we have in Windows 10. And you will find a lot of these utilities exist across other operating systems as well, even on phones as well, mobile devices. Let's have a look. 
First, we have the disk cleanup utility. So you hit the window key on your keyboard and you start typing in disk cleanup instead of searching through the menu, obviously, and that pops up. You are then given an option as to like, what would you like to clean up? And then you can choose all the various spaces of what you want to clean up. Now, this is to free up disk space on your computer. So this is a utility that's designed to free up space on your computer system. Another one that we have is the defragmentation. Okay, we've you've learned about this. You should know what defragmentation is all about as you're using your computer over time on a magnetic disk drive. The data gets scattered around the drive and it gets fragmented. Defragging defrags the, the data, puts it together in a quicker to access path okay so you look up defrag you get your optimized drives this is windows 10 okay so windows 10 is like optimized drives it's defragmentation and there you can see i can see my ssd needs optimization although i did read that you don't really need to um defrag hdds uh, ssds not hdds hmm. i'm going to check that out uh, another one that we have is system configuration it's called ms config don't play with this at home, kids. Play with this on someone else's computer instead. And you can see it gives me uh, a whole list of all the things that are running on my computer. I can stop them. I can disable them. I can look at what is going to start up when I start up my machine. So that's a system configuration tool that I can access a lot more of the back end on that. And that's, yeah, that's pretty scary. Um, if you don't know what you're doing. Hmm, yes. Uh, another one, another utility is the task scheduler. So you look up task scheduler and you get this and that's to schedule tasks to look after your computer and you can say, OK, computer, every Monday I want you to defrag the drive and every Tuesday I want you to run updates on this and things like that. OK, so that's the task scheduler. So these are just utilities to go through and that's what utility software actually is about. So let us try and recap and um, do this with your hands. I can't remember what I was going to say, sorry. So the operating system. So here you have your computer. There it is over there. You've got your computer system there. And what is the purpose and what is the function of the operating system? The purpose and function of an operating system is first, primarily to communicate with the hardware on your computer, whether it's something to do on the motherboard, the circuits, etc., uh, microchips and all that jazz. And I said all that jazz. And uh, to communicate with hardware, okay, like printers, communicate with things like monitors, uh, mouse, the keyboard, all the external peripherals that you have attached to your computer. The point of the operating system is so that you can communicate with those and control those devices. However, it's also, on the other side, it's also allowing you to work with software and create things and solve problems and do things. Perform tasks is a better, don't write do things in your exam, right? Perform tasks. Uh, also involving uh, the interface, okay, as, as much as the interface you can. Touchscreen, touchscreen, very nice. That's what that buttons for it. And of course, last but not least, the settings or the configuration of your computer system. So all these things in the operating system, that is why we need an operating system, not just with the peripherals and the hardware, but also with the software and the running of the computer to make it run smoothly and efficiently so that you have a happy operating system with no problem. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'll see you in the next video when we look at some more to do with system software.